The dew point machine is on the cutting edge of the agricultural industry. The ability to add moisture into hay to prevent leaf loss is monumental, but even more important is knowing how to operate the dew point machine safely. With great power comes great responsibility. In this video, we will teach you how to safely operate the dew point machine. This video will give you the basic operating knowledge. To become more knowledgeable about the dew point machine, we suggest reading the owner's manual. More resources, such as support forums, troubleshooting guides, and videos can all be found on the customer portal. The dew point machine is roughly 10.5 feet wide, 11 feet tall, and 17 feet long. It is 17,000 pounds empty and 29,000 pounds fully filled with water and fuel. It holds 300 gallons of number two diesel, which will last between nine and 18 hours, depending on steam rate. It holds 1,000 gallons of water in the supply tanks and 350 gallons in the boiler itself, which lasts between three and six hours, depending on steam rate. The boiler operates at 12 PSI with a max of 15 PSI. It uses a propane pilot ignition system. It also has a three cylinder, 21 horsepower diesel generator that powers the dew point machine. It is the owner's responsibility to contact their local or state boiler inspector's office to learn the boiler inspection and registration requirements and to comply with all rules and regulations regarding boiler operation in their area. Emergency shutoffs are located directly on the machine. There's a red battery cutoff switch located on the passenger side of the generator. There is also a power breaker on the driver's side of the generator. Turning off the touch screen will also shut everything down, as will the control power switch. Never remove any boiler component while the boiler is under pressure. Serious injury or death can occur. Always make sure that the hydraulic brakes are hooked up and functioning properly. The dew point machine should not be run by a tractor without hydraulic brake lines, nor should it be pulled by a tractor with less than 200 horsepower. Always lock the steering axles on the steamer and baler when traveling on roadways, operating on hillsides or backing up. Make sure your tractor steering stops are set to prevent oversteering, which could damage your equipment. A yearly boiler safety test should be performed to make sure that the safety devices are working properly. In the main menu, go to Maintenance, then Boiler Safety Test. Touch Test Now to initiate the boiler safety test. Touch the blue Instructions button for information on how to properly complete the test. There are many devices on this machine that ensure operator safety. Low water cutoff 1 and 2 make sure there's adequate water in the boiler before and during operation. The high pressure limit switch and the operating pressure switch make sure the boiler pressure is normal before and during operation. The brass pressure relief valve is the last resort pressure safety that relieves pressure if the boiler reaches more than 15 psi. The airflow switch makes sure there is adequate airflow through the burner before and during operation. And the flame detector detects the presence or absence of a flame. There are also many sensors on the machine to help with operation. The flu temperature sensor alerts the operator if the exhaust is getting too hot. The boiler water level sensor is responsible for holding the target water level in the boiler and the boiler pressure sensors 1 and 2 are responsible for maintaining the target steam pressure in the boiler. Only use soft water or reverse osmosis treated water in the dew point machine. This prevents hard water scale from forming inside the boiler. Add one gallon of dew good to every 1,000 gallons of water. This protects the steel inside the boiler from corrosion. This also ensures boiler longevity. Make sure your moisture sensor is calibrated and you know how it reacts with steam moisture. We recommend using a microwave moisture sensor such as the Gazika. They tend to be most accurate when dealing with steamed hay. Contact moisture sensors tend to give sporadic readings when baling with steam. Before starting the machine, let's perform our daily pre-operation maintenance. 
grease PTO anti-rotating shields, check engine coolant and oil levels, check the water separator, clean the supply water filter, Be sure to bleed air from the filter as shown. Drain 30 to 40 gallons of water from the boiler. Inspect gauges, sensors, and sight glasses. Now turn on the touch screen by flipping the switch on located at the bottom. The first thing you should notice when turning on the touch screen is the PPM or parts per million setting. This needs to be set based on your water test. If you don't know your PPM number, contact your dealer. The dew point uses this setting to control boiler water quality and keep water from boiling over into the steam hoses. Please note, before starting, you should ensure the supply water filter is clean and drain 30 to 40 gallons of water to prevent a high concentration of dissolved solids, which causes water to boil over into the steam hoses. We completed this already in our pre-operation maintenance. After pressing continue, we see our different start options. Start all fills the boiler with water, starts the burner, and gets you ready to steam. Start fill fills the boiler with water. Keep hot cycles the dew point machine on and off, keeping the water hot, often used during cold nights to keep the boiler from freezing. Wet layup fills the boiler completely full of water to prevent corrosion during short-term storage and is often used between cuttings. Now start the machine by pressing start all and confirm start. The generator will start and the boiler will begin filling with water. Filling the boiler takes approximately 8 to 10 minutes. Once the boiler is full the burner will ignite and begin heating the water. This will take approximately 20 minutes from a cold start and 10 to 15 minutes if the boiler is still warm from recent operation. Now you need to tune the burner. Press Tune Burner and then Low Tune. Now while watching the exhaust, decrease the louver low fire position until dark smoke appears. Then slowly increase the louver low fire position, allowing four to five seconds between adjustments while tuning until the smoke clears. At this point, you increase the louver position an additional 4% to finalize the burner tune. Then using the same guidelines, tune the high fire. Once the boiler's done building pressure, the steam purge valve opens to purge the remaining oxygen in the boiler before going to field work. Now you're ready to steam. On the field work screen, there are indicators for supply water level, boiler water level, steam pressure, fuel level, and the remaining ignition cycle count on the propane tank. Down here, the flue, ambient, Boiler and feed water temperatures are all displayed, along with the fuel pump, propane, nozzle 1 and 2 pressures. The feed pump, circulation pump, water purge and steam purge are on when the indicator is green. Flame is also detected whenever there is a voltage other than zero. The screen also tells us what percentage the louver is open. To control the steam being injected into the bales, you have four valves controlled by these sliders. The top front, top rear, bottom front, and bottom rear sliders are all controlled proportionally by the master steam slider on the right. Individual valve adjustments should be used to adjust the steam output of the manifolds in relation to each other. At least one valve should always be set to 100% where the most steam is wanted. Adjust other valves in proportion to the valve you want the most output from. The master steam slider should be used to adjust the overall steam output. The master steam slider also adjusts all valves in the proportion you have set. To start steaming, you turn the steam valves on by pressing the top right button. Then test each of the steam valves individually by turning them on to ensure proper function. 
Notice that there is no steam. Steam will not start until you raise the master steam slider on the right. Top front. Top rear. Bottom front. Bottom rear. In optimal conditions where the windrow is cured evenly, top to bottom, and the moisture is consistent, turn on all four steam valves and adjust them to 100%. A good starting point with the master steam slider is 60%. Run like this for two bales or until the steamed hay reaches the Gazika moisture sensor. Adjust the steam rate accordingly. Always remember to wait for two bales to see your adjustments before readjusting the steam. When you have a windrow with more moisture on top than on bottom, adjust the top steam valves to 70% and the bottom steam valves to 100% for a more consistent bale. When you have a windrow with more moisture on the bottom than on top, adjust the bottom steam valves to 70% and the top steam valves to 100% for a more consistent bale. In hot and dry conditions when using a high rate of steam, it's helpful to adjust the front manifolds to 70% to avoid losing steam pressure. This setting achieves a more desirable effect on the bales. Avoid baling when there's any stem moisture. If conditions require baling while stem moisture still remains, be sure to use a proven hay preservative. Please note, stem moisture and steam are not good friends. Turn off the steam valves when turning at the end of the windrow or when crop material is not being fed into the baler. Failure to do so can result in a wet flake being fed into the baler. When steam is turned off, the steam purge valve will open to prevent the burner from shutting off. If the burner shuts off, the startup sequence takes approximately one minute and it will take approximately two to three minutes to regain operational steam pressure. About once per hour, the boiler will require a blowdown. When prompted, press the blowdown button. A blowdown takes approximately 10 to 20 minutes to complete. Always allow the blowdown to finish unless you have to stop for an infilled repair. If a fault appears on the screen, consult the troubleshooting guide to fix the problem or call your dealer. Ideal bale moisture when using steam is 11 to 15 percent. Steamed bales should be tightly packed with good leaf pattern. The sides of bales should be smooth but not smeared. When baling in hot and dry conditions, never exceed 135 degrees internal bale temperature and never stack bales that are above 115 degrees. If weather requires you to stack bales before they are cooled below 115 degrees, stack them in a pyramid style as shown to avoid discoloring your hay. If dark spots or wet flakes appear on your bales, ensure the water purge valve is functioning by listening for the crackling sound in the rear supply tanks. Check the PPM setting on the touchscreen to make sure it matches your water test. Finally, drain approximately half the boiler and refill with fresh water. High concentrations of minerals in the boiler will cause foaming, which results in water carrying over into the steam. If the problem persists, contact your dealer. To achieve maximum fuel to steam efficiency, keep your bale flake count between 30 and 35 flakes per bale. However, every farm operation will vary in its desired flake count. We encourage you to experiment and discover what flake count and moisture content suits you and your market needs. Remember, you are responsible for how your bales turn out. After operating each day, you will perform your post-operation maintenance. Clean the generator and engine with compressed air. Purge hot water through the Y strainer for 2-3 to three seconds. Remove crop debris from enclosed areas and purge steam through the baler hardware nozzles to clear debris. 
A detailed maintenance schedule is found in the back of the owner's manual. Thank you for watching the Dewpoint Machine Operator Training. We wish you all a successful hay season. Staley West. Changing agriculture, changing lives.